Well, here we are back in the chronological survey. I'm working in Greek with Greek mythology, and as I've told you several times, I'm not going through every single myth. Rather, I'm using adaptations. Uh, and uh, I want to tell you about one more adaptation. Uh, this using of adaptations took us to Brazil with Black Orpheus. I hope you saw it. Took us to London with uh, Pygmalion. I hope you saw it. And now we're going to go to California. Uh, well, the muses. It's, you know, I, I, in your notes, if you're taking notes, I guess you could call it myth of the muses. This isn't exactly a story, but the muses are real important uh, characters in, in, uh, in mythology, especially, well, they're important anyway, but I, w I was going to say especially to artists of any kind. Uh, they were, and it's most complicated, there were nine of them. Although, again, to be too technical about Greek mythology is a mistake. Uh, Sometimes, I mean, we, we want to make it like it scientific, but, but the idea is that there, there were these mythical beings who had the ability to inspire artists. Uh, and if, if you were inspired by a muse, well, then you could produce great art of some kind. Uh, uh, and if you weren't inspired, it was almost hopeless. Uh, you know, why even try? Because the muse hadn't inspired you. A real, real neat idea, I think, really. But anyway, uh, and it's most complicated. There were nine. And I'll show you another promised chart. I'm going to show you a, a chart before we leave mythology. I'll show you a chart that sorts this out some. Each one had a certain domain. Uh, and there was this idea of being kissed by a muse. I, I should put that in quotes, I guess. If you were kissed by a muse, you were unusually inspired. Now you could go on to do something that uh, it, it just amazes you. If, you're, if one day you're sitting down and say you're drawing and, and you're drawing something better than you ever drew before, or you're sitting at the piano and you're playing and all of a sudden you've got it. It just is so good. Well, the Greeks had an explanation. You had been kissed by the muse of that particular art. Uh, m many writers have talked about they need a muse. At, at the opening of Shakespeare in Love, uh, he's, uh, Shakespeare's dealing with the fact that his muse has deserted him. Uh, I rather think the muse, for the last several years, the muse of music uh, has somewhat deserted me. I haven't been inspired to, to great, make great music for two or three years. And by the way, muse is in the word music in the etymology. It's in the word museum. It's in the word amuse, as in amusement park. If you are bemused, uh, you are thinking about something. Uh, well, um, yeah, but by the same token, where I say I, I feel a little bit like I've been deserted by the, the muse of, of, of music, I, I think the muse of teaching, if there is such a one, I, I've been kissed by the muse of teaching because I... I'm, I'm enjoying this, and I'm not being paid to do this. I just like to teach, and so I'm teaching. Why? Well, I can't help it. The muse of teaching kissed me, I guess. Um, anyway, in Xanadu, uh, a word taken from a very famous poem called Kubla Khan is quoted in it. Xanadu, in that poem, I'll tell you about that poem later, uh, it's, it's a vision of paradise. Uh, well, Xanadu is a roll arena. Uh, in California, they, they, these guys build a roller arena and they're going to call it Xanadu. Well, it's an adaptation set in the 1980s. What happens is the muses come to life in a California city and they go around kissing artists and they kiss this one guy, or, uh, well, <laughs> he thinks her name is Kira. She's actually uh, uh, Terpsichore. Wow, I thought I wasn't going to come up. Terpsichore was the muse of dance. <clears throat> and <clears throat> And a song and dance, maybe, <clears throat> I don't know, there was, there was nine of them, each had a domain. She's, her real name is Terpsichore. Uh, and at one point she starts to say, my real name is Terp, but he kisses her and she doesn't get out Terpsichore. He thinks she's Kira. He thinks she's a woman. They fall in love. This is impossible. It, it's kind of cute in a way. Strange, though. Olivia Newton-John plays the muse. Gene Kelly, this is one of his last movies. Uh, I tell kids he's probably the second most famous dancer of the 20th century. Maybe that's bold to say. Uh, I would think Fred Astaire would be the most famous, but then as the kids are maybe thinking Michael Jackson, they're more famous than Michael Jackson. I don't know. Anyway, Gene Kelly is in it. And uh, 
Uh, the part that I like the kids to see, I like to have them see the very beginning where the muses come to life. And, and, they, and she plants that kiss on this guy and he's inspired. Um, and uh, if I have time, and I usually don't have time, uh, when, the, when the character played by Gene Kelly and the other, and the young guy, and describe their vision of what they're going to do with this big wrestling arena that they're going to make into a roll arena. And they have these two different visions. It's, it's music coming out of the 40s and then music coming out of the 80s. And it goes back and forth and the two come together and you find out that's the same song. Uh, that's pretty clever what they've done there. Of course the idea is muses have always inspired. They're not uh, prejudiced about just the music of today or the Baroque music. Uh, uh, I like to show them that if I have time, but I really like to show them where Kira uh, makes it clear to, to uh, Sonny Malone is his name, that she is a muse. Uh, that's, you know, and, and like, I just, you'll have to find it if you care enough. I'm sure it would be easy enough to find on either on YouTube or some way. Uh, it, she reveals that she is in fact a muse. And the way she goes about proving that she's a muse is pretty funny. I like the kids to see that. Uh, he, he then goes and visits Zeus and gets permission, gets Kira permission to come back for their opening night. And it all ends in a finale. I guess now that I think of it, Xanadu was a state, yes, I'm, I'm sure it was a Broadway musical. Uh, it was a Broadway musical before, or a stage play anyway, before it was made into that movie. I, I only saw it as a movie. This word zoigma, I put it there just because if you want, yeah, it's a literary device, and it's not a very well-known literary device. But toward the end of it, there's one dance that Gene Kelly's in, where he he goes into one kind of a scene and comes out in another kind of a scene, and, and I think there is a name for that. I think that's called zoigma, except it's usually used with speech. It's one of the more obscure literary devices. But I did want to take the chance to point out to you that in that one dance, I think you can see the zoigma being used. Well, uh, it's going to be up to you. I'll, I'll readily grant that, uh, that uh, it's a strange uh, movie. <laughs> the kids nowadays, they look at the way people are dressed in 1980 and, and they think, wow, did people, guys really wear shorts like that? Almost embarrasses them. Uh, all right, uh, that's it for today. Hope to see you tomorrow.